I often think, I often wonder, why are so many artists so left-wing and they're group thinking? Why is it? And it's just about everywhere you look. I mean, look at any writers' festival in the country, wall to wall of the left. Look at our comedy festivals. Now, here's one answer, a pretty astonishing example, too. An answer, one answer is that because our arts bureaucrats actually spend your money on them. They spend it specifically on artists who preach politics rather than make great art. That sort of fit into the left's cultural agenda. Now, to that amazing example today, the Australia Council for the Arts, which is our top arts body, our top one, it hands over your money to artists. It's just announced the winners of this year's eight new fellowships. And it's very good money. $80,000 for each of these eight artists. People you almost certainly have never heard of, but almost all of whom promote the pet agendas of the left. Race politics, gender politics, global warming, multiculturalism, a hatred of Scott Morrison, whose government is actually funding this. More fool the government. Honestly, how many liberal arts ministers have been asleep at the wheel? Here are the eight. I'll show you them all. There's $80,000 of your money to a queer cabaret artist who draws a picture of the Prime Minister on her backside. I've seen her act, but I cannot show it on TV. You look it up on YouTube if you want. She lies on her side, her backside bare, painted with Scott, Mor Scott Morrison's face. Then she wobbles a cheek to make it look like her backside is talking, and she mocks him like this. My name is Scott Morrison. <laughs> I am the leader of the Liberal Party. Thank me for sparing you the vision. Another $80,000 goes to a multidisciplinary body-centred favour artist. It beats me what that is. Uh, who tells us, uh, or actually tells the story of her homeland, which she calls Tonga, even though she's born in Sydney. Very multicultural. And how Pacific Islands are allegedly threatened by global warming. Well, that's a beat up we know. Another $80,000 goes to the visual artist best known for her political use of knitting. Knitting. To tackle significant social issues, including, of course, sexual harassment. There's $80,000 to a theatre creator whose latest work, I just read uh, in the paper the other day, seeks to break down the interlude between lesbian fantasy and the queer ordinary. May not be surprised to know that show got bad reviews. That's uh, another $80,000 going to a Chinese-Australian poet who writes on toilet rolls about bodily fluids, says, has a lot to say about faeces, I think. $80,000 to an Indigenous Australian singer. $80,000 to a singer celebrating his Ethiopian ancestry and culture. Now, apart from those seven, there's just one more artist, the dancer with no obvious political agenda, and that's it. That's the eight best. Seriously. But I've got to ask, you know, yeah, good on them, you know, help your local artists and all that. But really, how much of that work do you think brings Australians together, enriches the culture, doesn't split us into tribes? How much of this political activism will still be relevant in a year or two? Because political fashions change. It's intersectionality today. It's something else tomorrow. And how much of this ticker box leftism is actually art that would survive without your help? Speaking of which, there's this question, why on earth are you funding it? $80,000 for each of those people. Joining me to discuss, actually another waste of money, but we'll get on to that, is Mark Latham, former federal Labor leader and now One Nation leader in the New South Wales Parliament. Mark Latham, great to see you again. Now, before we get on to what you found, how do you explain taxpayers being forced to hand out so much arts money to, to this kind of political agenda and only the agenda of the left? How does that happen? Well, they're welfare-dependent people, aren't they, Andrew, relying on government funding, relying on the uh, taxpayers' uh, largesse uh, funnelled to them by, as you say, um, uh, ignorant, um, slothful uh, arts ministers who think somehow this is the arts. And you've got to ask the question, if the arts are so good, and we hear that all the time, and wealthy people in particular are very happy to fund and support the arts, well, why isn't it all funded by the private sector? And we don't have to have uh, government funding of 
someone painting a picture of Scott Morrison on their backside. And I've got to say, um, they need to advertise uh, these applications a bit wider, Andrew, because there's plenty of Australians who would certainly paint a picture of uh, Morris and Albanese, even Adam Bant on their backside for 80 grand. We'd all be into that, you know. They've got to uh, start to publicise these applications and, 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 and funding possibilities a lot wider than they do at the moment. And I think you should have showed on the screen what this so-called artwork looks like, because it's probably the only way the taxpayers would ever know uh, what they were funding and is there any value for money in it. It's hard to believe that uh, well, this I is regarded as art. The bosses, I'm afraid. Well, the, the, the art's supposed to, to that, be publicly but, uh, available. There was worries about people not finishing their dinners. But anyway, there you yeah, go. Yeah, well, I've had my dinner, so no, I would have been all right. Weird. You but... make a point. <laughs> Mark, you make a point. But I go uh, into the local the nearby city here, I better not say it because I don't want to be hounded out. I see plenty of people who have painted pictures of maybe not Morrison, but other people on their arms, on their legs, on their, on their, on their chests, on their backs, you know, tattoos everywhere. They don't seem to get 80,000 bucks for that. But anyway, there I go. I'm just, I, I tell you what, I don't understand why an arts minister, particularly a conservative one, Mark, doesn't say, wait, if taxpayers' money from all sides of policies is going to this or that writers' festival or whatever, there has to be a debate. Fund both sides of the argument. Why doesn't that happen? Well, I don't think you need to fund any side of any argument. Uh, art should stand in its own right. And one of the problems you've got here is if people right. want to use the arts as a form of politics. I always say this about the schools system. If you're a teacher out there and you're intensely political and you want to use your little kids in, in the class there as uh, political fodder, well, the much better option, just run for an election. So if you're an artist and, 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 and you think maybe you could win a bit of support with whatever they're doing, run at election time. You know, we have this uh, democratic system. It's not perfect, but it's the best thing uh, invented for politics. And if you really want to articulate your point of view about uh, uh, the world and Australia and where you live and uh, you believe in certain political beliefs, put your name on a ballot paper. Don't soak up taxpayers' funding, this enormous they might not waste. Get elected, so. Okay. Well, I mean, well, just in case people maybe, think I'm exaggerating know, about Adela about writers, just in case people think I'm exaggerating about writers festivals, Adelaide's Writers Week is coming up. It's starring Kevin Rudd, Malcolm Turnbull, Barry Jones, former Foreign Minister Gareth Evans, there's three Labor M former Labor MPs and one uh, Liberal hater, Jane Caro, Anita Heiss, Bruce Pascoe, false Aboriginal, Grace Tame, etc., Annabel Crabb, Sean Kelly. I mean, it's a festival of anti-liberals. Mark Latham. Thank you so much indeed for your time. Thanks, Andrew.